The solar market is absolutely booming, but behind these growth headlines, some companies are in trouble and they're quietly disappearing from the market altogether. They're either going bust, they're giving up, or just deciding they can't make this model work. Well, in this video, we're gonna take you through why that happens and what you can do as a consumer to make sure you don't end up getting burnt by a solar company that goes into administration. Right now, there are over 5,000 registered installers on the MCS database. Now, MCS only publish the numbers joining as registered installers. They don't have a library of failed or installers that have closed down. Aside from MCS, there's no public register that records any solar companies that go into liquidation. What we do have access to is the London Gazette. This is a national record for all companies that do go into administration. And what we've seen over the last couple of years is more and more postings from solar companies appearing in the Gazette. So we know this is a problem, we hear it from customers too. Now this video isn't about fear or scaremongering, it's just about understanding why this happens and what consumers can do to mitigate it. Also, if you're a solar installer, there might be some stuff in here that helps you plan your business better to prevent yourself getting caught out in some of the issues that you'll experience. Right, let's dive into some of the challenges that a solar company will face. And this one can affect any solar company, even if you've got the rest of your ducks in a row, and it's cash flow. Now, cash flow is so important, it is critical to any business, never mind solar installers, but for solar installers, it can be even more challenging. Project values are really high, and generally, you'll only see that cash after the project has been installed and the customer is happy. But before that event, you've got lots of bills to pay. You've got acquisition costs, marketing, you've got panels, inverters, merchants, scaffolders, laborers, roofers, electricians, fuel van lead generators you've got operational costs overheads and all the stuff that's going to suck all of the cash out of the business while you're waiting for your customers to pay and there is one cash flow issue that is causing the most problems the bat trap swipe now as a consumer when you purchase solar panels you'll pay zero percent vat on that purchase but the installer they've got to pay vat on all the products and services they buy to get that job done and then they're going to claim that back later on so let's look at an example how this works in like the real world here we've got a ten thousand pound example solar contract so the consumer signed up so has the installer now typically in the uk service industry businesses installation businesses are going to be working on about a 20 percent margin we're going to come back to margins later on so theoretically in this deal we have £2,000 worth of margin for the installer. The basis we're working on a 20% margin, this job to install is going to cost the installer £8,000. Now when he purchases the materials, organises scaffolding, organises additional labour or certification fees, most of them, if not all of them, are going to have VAT on them. So it's probably going to be another 20% worth of cash to deliver this install. 20% of 8,000 is 1,600 pounds. So the installer, in terms of cash to do the deal, it's going to cost them 9,600 pounds in cash. So you're thinking, hang on a minute, they're only making 400 pounds. They're not, they're still making a margin of £2,000, but cash, margin, and profit are three different things. And if you confuse them, it's deadly. Let me explain a little bit further. I'm gonna rub this off, and I'm gonna draw what this actually looks like. So let's use time, because time is the issue generally for cash flow. So if we start here and move across, this is our timeline. We're gonna go for January, we're gonna go for February, We've got March and then we have got April. Now let's assume that our solar customer makes the contract at some point round here. So they've agreed to pay this 10,000 pounds for the install. The install date is set for early February and the contractor orders the materials probably around this point. Now the materials on a solar job probably account for around 70% of the cost. Just keep that in the back of your mind. 
Now our install date is here and the customer probably pays us around here because the install goes in, they typically take two or three days to get done, then you need to do your certification fees, get the whole thing handed over and the customers have to pay. Customers can be baddies too, so it might take a little bit longer. So right here we get £10,000 in cash off that customer. Now, straight away, because the materials and the cost to do the job cost us £8,000, we've got to pay £8,000 out and we've probably got a credit account. So here, £8,000 leaves the account plus the VAT because there was VAT on those costs. So it's actually £9,600 leaves the account at the end of February. Now, we do get the VAT, the difference here is our VAT. Because we're a registered VAT business, we're gonna get that VAT back, but it takes three months to get the VAT back if you're on quarterly returns. So, we're gonna have purchased the materials here and we had an invoice date in late January. It's gonna be January, February, March, into April, before the VAT man is going to give us the £1,600. So although we've made a £2,000 margin on this job, we have only actually seen £400 of the physical cash. Now, if you're a consumer watching this, you might have seen £2,000 margin and thought, that is a lot to make on a solar install, but everyone makes this mistake, and especially installers, because you can confuse margin with profit, and you can also confuse margin profit with cash. They're all different metrics. So let's take a look now. If we look at margin here, margin is the difference between the sale contract, which was £10,000, and the cost to do the job, which was £8,000, and we had a £2,000 margin. Now, profit, the profit is going to be the margin less the operational costs of the business. So we have office staff, we have marketing, we have rent, we have rates, we have certification fees, insurance, vans, fuel, everything else is going to come out of the margin. And typically, service businesses work on a 4 or 5% margin. So based on 5% on this job, we're left with about £500 profit before tax. Now, it gets even more confusing for an installer when you start to consider cash because you might see £10,000 come in, you've not got your stuff to pay for because it's on account and you see cash coming in, you see cash going out and what you're missing along the way is actually from each job on a cash perspective, you're only really realizing that £400 in this example. So if your operating costs are really high, then that £400 is not gonna stretch and you are desperately trying to get to your next VAT return to get that money back. The solar business in this example is now under cash flow pressure. They have margin and they have profit, but they are cash poor. So to drive more business, they're gonna drop prices. Now this starts to get really complicated because let's take a look at this same example and what we are doing for the customer now is saying we are going to work on a 10% margin. So we're going to do this deal for the customer for £9,000. We are dropping our price, making our customers happy and winning more business. Now, the job is still costing us £8,000 to deliver plus that VAT. Can you see the problem? We have a thousand pound margin between the job. So our margin is half, but it's still in a positive position. Let's replace the deal on the board. So it's a 9,000 pound deal. We incur our 8,000 pounds and our 1,600 pounds from a cash perspective around here. And we collect our 9,000 pounds here. We then go into the VAT return again and we go down these periods and we're going to get our £1,600 back from the purchases and the cost to do the job down the road. 
the issue we have now is that previously when we were making a 20% margin, we had 400 pounds of free cash to help cover the baseline administration costs of the business. But in this scenario, the deal is the wrong way around. We've charged 9,000 pounds. And from a cash perspective, it actually costs us 9,600 pounds. So we're competitive, we're selling more, but now we're in a negative cash position. This solar business is in crisis. So what can we do to turn it around? Well, one thing we could start to do is ask for some deposits to ease our cash flow burden. So we say to our 9,000 pound contract, look, we need a 20% deposit. That is 1,800 pounds. Now, that 1,800 pounds is gonna help the cash because obviously that's gonna give us some more money to help pay for these administration costs, help with ordering materials and the rest of it. The issue with the 1,800 pounds in this particular scenario is we are working on this 10% margin. So we're working on a thousand pound margin. We've had more than the margin off the client and everything else thereafter is going to be cost. And if we lose control of our margins, although we're cash positive, we are margin poor. And the cost of below margin, the administration, the staff, the marketing, if they exceed more than £1,000 per deal, we are over trading. We might have cash, but it's other people's cash. And we're over trading. We're going to go bust. It's going to end pretty poorly. There are a few things we can do to bring us back into a better state of health. We could look at moving our VAT returns from a quarterly basis to a monthly basis. That's going to shorten that time period. We can also look to shorten and work on and improve the time between selling and installing. Now with solar, that is challenging because in between this whole process, we have DNOs, district network operators, they operate the grid and you have to apply to have a solar system installed. And if that takes 45 days, it pushes lead times down the road. And again, that just puts more and more pressure on installers from a cash flow perspective. Right, that's our cash and margin issues dealt with for a second, but what about other things that are putting pressure on these solar companies? Well, one of them is the acquisition cost of customers' marketing expenditure. Like we said before, there's over 5,000 registered installers on the MCS database. This is a super competitive market, and there are plenty of these solar sales agencies flying around, promising the world and charging a lot of money to provide customers who want to buy products. And if you're paying too much to acquire customers, that's going to dim in your profit margin. And if you're already working on a tight product margin, this could end pretty badly. If you've forgiven all of the margin, trying to be super competitive on price to win more customers, when you start facing problems with product failures, maybe you installed it wrong and you have to go back, there is no cash to put these things right. Now, where all of these things become a huge problem is when you are a fast growing company because the cash flow issues become exacerbated, as do the growing pains of marketing costs, customer acquisition, recalls, poor workmanship, and any issues you have along the way. So you can be masked by having these deposits. It looks like you're cash positive, but as the business is growing, you are spending that money just to survive. Now, this is pretty scary to watch as a consumer, but there are a few things just to remember here. Firstly, there are still 5,000 registered solar businesses. Not all of them are running it poorly. Plenty of people are making a success out of this industry. You have to just be super tuned in to your business, how you are running it. You have to have liquidity around you, plenty of cash to operate in this market. Now, as a consumer, it's very difficult from the outside to work out who has cash, who is managing their business properly. So what can you do to make sure you don't get caught up in a business that's going to go bust? The first place to start is looking into the history of that business. How long have they been trading for? Do they have active filed accounts on Company's House? And can you see they have a cash positive balance because if they do and they've been trading for a long period of time they've probably got their house in order the next thing to look at is accreditation when you apply to be a solar installer there is a certain amount of work that goes in by accreditation bodies to make sure you are fit for purpose now what i would say on this point is 
that the regulators don't seem to have too much of an emphasis on your financial management of your business. What they're looking for is, are you insured? Do you have the proper paperwork? Do you have qualified engineers? I can't see really how they ever come in and start managing the process to make sure that you are a financially stable institution. One accreditation body that does go a huge step further is WITCH, their Trusted Trader Scheme. Now the WITCH Trusted Trader Scheme, they will come in for a full three or four day office audit and they do dive into the financial workings of the business. They are very particular on financial health, so making sure you find an installer that is WITCH approved does provide another level of protection or reassurance in your mind that they've probably got their financial house in order. Earlier on, we talked about deposits and how installers can mistreat deposit cash to mask margin issues in a business. Now, what this doesn't mean is that as a consumer, you should refuse to pay a deposit. Deposits are crucial to making the whole thing work. A well set up business will manage that deposit properly. But what you can do as a consumer is make sure you are protected. Now, in the UK, you have something called Section 75 protection. So if you use funding, i.e. a mechanism to spread the cost of the cost of the installation over a period of time that provides you with section 75. Also, you can pay the deposit for the value of the contract on a credit card and even sometimes on a debit card and you'll still have section 75 cover. Now, what is really cool to know is on section 75 is that even if you just pay a little bit of the contract, on the card, the whole contract value is protected on that card, the same with a finance agreement. So don't be faxing or doing wire transfers to an installer's bank account because you will be left without no support. The next thing to look at is the reviews and the opinion of this company from everyone else. Like, do they have online reviews? Do they have online feedback? How are they talked about in the forums? Do people have positive experiences with them? It takes five minutes just to have a bit of a research around and make sure that you're comfortable with your chosen supplier. And the last thing you want to be looking at is the manufacturer warranty for the product because installers offer a workmanship guarantee and it will generally come with a level of insurance behind it. But the real peace of mind you need is with the product manufacturer. How is their reputation in market? Are they good for aftercare? Will they stand behind you if that installer does disappear? Right, let's wrap this up. Now, the important thing to take away here, don't panic. This video is just designed to give you an insight to the inner workings and some of the challenges faced by the solar industry and to provide some insight to why some of these companies do go bust. But you have plenty of protection as a UK consumer if you purchase the product in the right way. And make sure you have that Section 75 protection when it comes to paying that initial deposit. Now, if you found this video useful, then please do subscribe to the Heatable YouTube channel because we do loads of content on renewables, heating systems and electrification of homes. So you can subscribe and it's free to do. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a like. And if you are interested in getting a quote for solar or a battery system, then head over to the Heatable website where you can book your free design call. Now, if you have enjoyed this video, then I reckon you're going to like this one too.